Hello, everybody. It's Gary Stuckey with Real Music. On today's show, I've got my favorite bass player of all time. Ross Valerie is here, formerly of Journey, my favorite band. He played on my favorite album, Escape, and my favorite song, Faithfully. We're going to talk about all that. I'm going to talk about his uh, brand new album, though. A very good album. You need to pick it up today and go to his website for more information. But yeah, check it out. His new album called All of the Above, and uh, you will be pleasantly surprised by this album. And uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll do it again soon. But here we go. Here he is. Here's Ross Valerie. We shall begin. Uh, by the way, you're my favorite bass player of all time. Have I ever mentioned that before in my life? Yes, I have a few times. Oh, thank you so much. Mm. I really, you're making me blush. I'm now telling I, you, man. Um, no, what to say? I just, I'll say this though. Uh, you're one of the most underrated. And sometimes when you say that, it's like, you know, people might take it the wrong way. Like, I thought I was, you know, I thought of myself a certain way. You know? But I think if people don't recognize music, if they've never picked up a bass guitar, especially, which I have mm-hmm. because of you, by the way. Why? Uh, um, they don't understand or appreciate the music because i didn't for a long time i was like a bass guitar you know mm-hmm. uh, you know no big deal it's in the background and then when i started playing i was like yeah it makes a big difference so you've you've made a big difference in music especially in journey uh you are journey just like the other guys you always be journey and i just gotta say that you're you're thank it you. man thank you so much i really appreciate that that's a wonderful way to start well there you go well, yeah. let's start like this. Now, I know you've got a brand new album called All of the Above. Now, yes. it's everything in, uh, and the kitchen sink. It's it's all kinds of music. Now, fans that might know your work from Journey or other, you know, things might say, this doesn't sound like, you know, what I would expect. So I know there's different styles <laughs> and things like that. And I did uh, take your advice. Now, you said to, like, lay down and turn down the lights and listen to the music and you know i just kind of laid back and listened to it and it was so enjoyable uh to to hear the music each song had its own uh you know personality but a great job by the way but all the above talk about that album and uh this this has been uh taking you a while to record this this album right well not so much to record it but it's taken a while to getting around to finishing what i started uh, given that a, a lot of this music goes back decades. In some cases, uh, the, the compositions were complete. And in other cases, they were um, strong ideas to develop. But only in the last uh, 10 or 12 years have I chosen to, again, finish what I started. And I've gained a great amount of satisfaction from having done that. And... Uh, I'm bringing forward lots of music that was written long ago and finally uh, completed the arrangements and the recording and the production of it. And uh, that in itself is, to me, success. It's not as though I'm trying to carve out a, a new niche in the music business. I'm just looking for the opportunity for people to hear it. And as some people may think that, well, this is it. This is all of this stuff. Well, actually, it isn't. It's just the first batch. There's more to complete and more than I'm actually still uh, recording as we speak. Uh, th- that process continues. And also, as uh, songs develop, uh, n- new ideas come up. So it's not er- entirely everything from the past. So I'm, I'm really enjoying continuing to record. So... Uh, all of the above is the is the first offering. Awesome. And you you had said I think uh, during the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, acceptance speech and some other interviews, you're talking about the bookends from your beginning, your, your childhood to then. You know, and you and you said if if you had the bookends, you you know if you were done at that point, you would be okay with those bookends. But then of course you're continuing. So this is like another book of your life right so uh that's good right another chapter and that's a very good point because there there there, there was a, a time gee it was uh, as much as three years ago uh, i had uh, just completed the basics 
for uh, one of the songs. I think it's Incident and Nishabur, and there were four or five of us there having completed somewhat of a live basic. And I said, this is it. This is it. And everybody said, what? And I said, this is success. If right. I never did anything beyond this point, I should be happy. But right. then again, you said, I'm continuing to do more. And uh, it's just very satisfying, not only to complete what I started, but to have the opportunity to release the music and have people hear it. Right. And uh, so cool, the uh, the people that you got on board to play, how did you get them involved with this, all the guys that play on this album? How did you uh, get them on board? Well, to start with, uh, many of the players are local. That is when they're home. Uh -huh. uh, Carl Parazzo is uh, uh, constantly performing, it seems, with Carlos Santana on the road. But he happened to be around, and I would book his time when he was home and available to bring in his fine work as a master percussionist on most of the songs. Um, uh, Mark Russo is very, very busy with the Doobie Brothers, as he has been for decades, but he also lives locally. So I find their free time to, to bring them into the fold. And m many of the other players, including uh, Vernon Black and Paul Spina, are local. Eric Levy, my, my mainstay collaborator on keyboards and arrangement, is also local. But then again, he also is on the road with Night Ranger. It's right. just so that I've been lucky and fortunate to have the right people in the right place at the right time, including uh, people like Prairie Prince, who also is providing all the artwork for my project, but he's also performing on uh, Tomland, the opener. So uh, it's just been uh, very convenient that certain people were home at certain times to bring him into the fold, including Greg Rico. Uh, from Sly and the Family Stone, who performed on Low Rider. Oh, good, great, great cover, by the way. Uh, you know, and, and uh, it, it's it's cool. It's a cool jam session, and it, it sounded like you're having fun on all these songs. You know, so why did you decide to do Low Rider? Was that something that you've always wanted to do? Well, uh, we had just finished Incident and Nishabor and Senior Blue, which are cover tunes per se, and I was sitting around with the boys, and I said. You know, there's this other, this other wild song that I've always wanted to do. And I mentioned the name and everybody said, well, let's do it. So within a month, we had the right people in the room to uh, perform that. But like you said, uh, some of these songs sound like we're just hanging out and jamming. Well, uh, Low Rider is one of those songs in which the majority of the players were in the room at the same time. And you get that effect. You get that feeling of interaction in real time and and that does happen on other songs and then there's songs that i constructed from the very beginning like um wild kingdom and windmill i started with just the instrument that i played and eric levy on keyboards uh, windmill is uh, i do all the guitar so i started with the basic guitar arrangement and the keyboards and built from there and with wild kingdom i'm playing a calliope part on it keyboard and i began with that and uh, eric levy on piano and built the song from there so there's two ways i've been approaching it constructing the song and pretty much for the most part uh, a live interactive feel for some of the others so have you been carrying these uh melodies in your head i mean the certain parts are there some of the things you've been kind of carrying with you and you added to the songs yeah in some cases uh, like tom land uh that song has been fairly complete since the, the late 80s, even though I, I think I began creating it in the 70s. And it's something I would jam with people on occasion. And, and it likely was jammed in sound checks uh, at journey shows, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And there's it just some of these songs I jammed with other people. And it, it was time to really flesh them out and create arrangements for other players and to record them uh, uh, decently. Right. And uh, did you decide to, did you purposely try to sound different on this album as opposed to your usual sound, like the, that journey sound? You know, did you try to say, I'm going to go a different route? I'm going to purposely try to sound a certain way? Or how did it come to be? That's a very good question. 
the way I'm approaching, especially my part in playing on these songs is what does the song call for? My primary part in all of this is, is as a composer and as an arranger, and then of course as a producer, but what does the song call for? And who would sound good for this kind of song? Who would be really attracted to this song? And whose parts would be attractive to the listener? So we have various players on various songs. And in some cases, you'll see that I'm just playing an accompanying bass part. I'm not featured. The album is not necessarily featuring me as a bassist or even as a guitarist or a keyboard player. It's my objective is each song has its needs. And I look at it that way rather than um, egocentrically, rather oh, this is this is me and this is how I play. It's it, what does the song need? And I'm enjoying that approach because it takes me outside of being what I've been known for as a, as a bassist or as an accompanist. So I know all about accompanying. So, you know, yeah. uh, for a bassist is, is to, to be, provide the fundamental pulse and the fundamental tonality, but in many cases to do so with reserve. So I have those skills and that approach, the instrument that is, uh, it's been, played in, in certain songs on my albums and on other songs I'm stepping out with melody lines and, and uh, fills and, and licks like that so uh, it, it's about what does the song need not about what do I want to play or I'm going to make sure I'm heard here you know, I, I'm actually kind of reserved about how the bass is mixed in these songs it's not always featured and it's not right. always poked your face it, it's a part of a bigger picture which has to do with the kind of composition involved right and that's a good point because a lot of people would say and i've seen some people i don't know if you read comments like online you know some people say you know mean things or they have their opinions and things like that but the thing is you know if somebody said to you that you weren't one of the greatest bass players because you're playing style like you were playing the part of the song that doesn't mean you can't play anything you want to. But to me, a, a person that plays exactly what the song needs and does it artfully and it fits, that's a really good bass player. And people don't realize that. They go, he's not, you know, flashy and he's not all this stuff. You know, because I know from your earlier years, you you were more free and jamming. I know in the later years, like in the 80s, there was more structure to the songs. You played your parts. But what I did notice was on the live like the captured album, you were tearing it up. So what I'm saying is when there's a structure for a song, you do what's needed, but when there's time to kind of have fun and, and, and man, some of the best bass lines I've ever heard is on captured and uh, the like greatest hits live. I, I listen to that, you know, it's all the collection and all the, and I'm like, man, that's really good stuff. I hope people pay attention to this guy. I don't think people pay attention like they should. I would hope that they do though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do know what you're saying, and, and it, it applies. What does the song need? Well, with much of the journey material, what does the song need from, from the bass? Because there are lead instruments, there's lead vocalists, and, and those things that are prominent and that are making the statement, how do you support that? So it's, it's the same approach to what I'm doing. Uh, and you, you mentioned uh, early journey, which was fusion experimental, and that's that was like jamming for everybody. And then there's uh, uh, Greatest Hits Live and Captured, which are very much live. But there's a little more um, flamboyance there from everybody when it's a live performance. But what it gets down to is what does the song need? So right. thanks, Clement. Yeah. And yeah. it has to do with being reserved, playing with sure. the song. Sure. Um and on the single lowrider now, I know uh, Josh Ramos uh, from The Storm yes. is single. How cool is that? You may know more about The Storm Records and Josh's participation in it, mostly as a guitarist, than, than the audience here may know. But there's a couple of songs, In the Raw and In the Mall. And he, he goes, In the Raw, In the Mall. <laughs> A lot of people have asked me, is that you singing on Low Rider? And I say, well, it could have been. But I don't, even at this moment, I don't have 
the dip that Josh <laughs> Ram 24 7. I thought he would be perfect to sing this because he's got that big voice all the time. So I just directed him to, to sing a certain way and to the inflections and the accents and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, the only way I could have done that predictably to walk in in the morning and sing it, I, I'd have to stay up all night and smoke cigarettes and drink tequila, <laughs> not the which I do. So John, perfect fit. He's known as a fine guitarist, but he's also known for that big, deep voice. Yeah. The, uh, that was so cool to see. I remember back then, uh, to hear, I remember listening to the radio. Uh, I've got a lot to learn about love and I'm thinking, man, that sounds like journey. And I look and basically they're three guys from journeys, you know, and I was guys like, wow. and a fine guitarist. Yeah. And that shows you to me, like whatever you do, you know, you, you, your heart and your plan was in journey. When you go to a different band, like the storm or, or, or your solo stuff, your heart is still there. You can still hear that sound. Yeah. And yeah. it's just there. It just really, it really captures that sound. I mean, people don't, like I said, if they don't study the music, if they don't pay attention, they might not hear it, which I do because I, I know you're playing. Uh, and so is it different? You're talking about, you know, different playing styles. Now, I know, and like I said, in the early years, you had more uh, chances to jam free style, but like, but like a song, like uh, I was noticing like on Mother, Father. Yeah. You're playing this little walk up. Or at Kia C, I think, and do, 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 like a little yeah. lead. And I'm thinking, you play in between the the, the chords. I mean, you play right. that, and I've always loved that, and a lot of people don't play like that, but you fill in the grooves. You fill in the empty spaces, and so, that is so good. Happened to work well for that song. There was room to do so, but um, in, in Journey songs, uh, in, in general, uh, there's already a lot going on, so one has needed to 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 be in reserve. And and bass is a subconscious thing, you know. Unless you're paying attention to it, you may not be entirely conscious of what it's providing in the way of support. So somewhere in between subconscious and overt parts, like you said, uh, that that has to be done tastefully and, and according to the, what the song means. Right. But I'm going to enjoy that. Yeah, that really, and in, in some of my favorite uh, bass lines, which, of course, uh, the Escape album, my all-time favorite uh, album, period. Uh, and great job on that, by the way. Uh, all-time song, though, is Faithfully. Now, I want to say this now. In that video, uh, and I know they took it from another video, the, the Journey Frontiers, I think, uh, that video... Uh, what was it? The uh, I can't remember the name of it. Where like, like the NFL films filmed y'all, and they made it into the the frontiers. Right. right. But uh, I always love the part. Now you're jamming in that video, and and I, and I said you you look like Jeff Foxworthy, old school or something. But <laughs> <laughs> but you're playing the crap out of it, but, but yeah. uh, with so much power, right? But when when the song hits, now like I said, my favorite song when it says, "I get the joy of rediscovering you." There's you yeah. and there's Mary holding uh, each other. And I always thought that was a really cool moment, like probably my favorite part of that uh, video. So that had to be special to see. And, oh, and yeah. do you go back and look at that and go, yep. And, and and Mary was so surprised by that, too, when it came out. Yeah, that is a special moment and how it pertained to the lyrics. You got that right. It's, it's just a beautiful uh, song. And. And when you put your part, like I said, you put in there, you put just what it takes uh, to do that song in there, you know. Um, well, tell me, uh, when you were at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and you finally, y'all finally got in, I was waiting for many years. I was like, why didn't, why didn't these guys ever get in? Uh, so how did that feel to to be there at that moment and see all those guys? I know it was cool to see some of the guys, you know, especially like Steve Perry, people like yeah. that. After a while, you haven't seen them, right? Most of the members were there on the stage. It, it was surreal. And what a fantastic moment that was to be there with everybody and, and to perform. And like you said, oh, it took forever. It, it takes a long time for, for most bands to make it to the, the Hall of Fame. It doesn't always happen on time, but uh, 
what have we got to complain about? You know, it happened. It was <laughs> finally an incredible, yeah. incredible occasion. Awesome. I know Foreigner finally got in. I know that's another band that I was waiting for many years to uh, to get in there, but I'm glad. Um, but yeah, that um, and and your uh, your acceptance speech, you know, uh, you go into this like comedy routine, which I was watching the other day. I think it was the uh, midnight special, and you're doing the intro for the band, and you're like, you know, yeah, yeah. and you're doing. I mean, that uh, that that just crack me up, man. I'm just saying, but see, some people think, you know, this is a guy serious. And like I said, on the back of the frontiers album, you, y'all are like parachuting out of the, and you look real serious, had the mustache and the serious look on your face, you know? And then yeah. later I'm seeing stuff like that. And I'm here, I said, this guy is crazy. But I mean, is that always been your personality to, uh, does that make it fun to have the comic relief, uh, in between like during, you know, or, or after shows, have you always cut up in between shows and things like that? Yeah, that's the zaniness and in, in pretty much in, in everybody's case, yes. <laughs> it was just funny to me to see that, you know, because like I said, you don't think, you wouldn't know that otherwise, and all of a sudden you, you start cracking up. But uh, in your speech, though, what I did notice, though, uh, is you said um, at one point, you, you said we're still here. And I made a point to uh, to remember that. And I know that Steve Perry wrote a song called We're Still Here. And I thought maybe he really paid attention to what you were saying, because I really think that what your speech was really hitting home uh, to a lot of people. And I, I've often wondered, did he uh, write that song based on your speech? Now, I know that he did say uh, something about your new album on the post on his post so I, I think that's pretty cool right i'm, I'm not sure w w whether those two things related but they even as i am here and and living a different life journey is still here they are thriving at to this very day yeah meantime i, I i've had the opportunity here with this album released to put out music videos, which I'm sure you mentioned one for Lowrider, but there are actually four music videos on my YouTube channel. And also, if, if you're not, if you or anyone else is not aware of the other three, you should check them out. I've seen them. I, are those, uh, I know, are those like AI generated? I know there's a lot of cool looking things there. It's, it's, it's kind of different. Michael Cotton, who's a, a, a longtime friend and old associate of Curry Princess, uh, they both were responsible for the, the visual image of the band, The Tubes, that they put so much time and energy into. Uh, Michael is doing all the music videos, and he uses AI, but lots of these videographers, they'll feed the data, what they want to see, into the program, and they push the button. He doesn't do that. He continues to manipulate and change what he sees and what it's giving him. He uses it as a tool rather than the generator. He yeah. calls it illustrating. And Michael is actually doing uh, uh, the videos for all the songs. Cool. Yes, good, uh, good videos. I was just watching one uh, a few minutes ago. But uh, I know the one, the first one that you did, the Tom Land, where you're flying over you know everything your feet are yeah are going everywhere is that symbolic for something or, or what does that mean that is michael's creation i gave him the idea of walking or wandering a country road that changes in topography and scenery and at some point with the guitar solo for to be more dramatic with the thunderstorm so he took some basic ideas and created this flying effect uh that that's michael cotton he's really inspired by the music and runs with it. I do participate in offering comments and little edits and little changes, which he's really grateful for. But for the most part, Michael runs with it and he really hears, he sees the music well. And in some cases I have definite ideas that he does illustrate, but Michael has his own imagination here to run free with. And uh, I'm so happy with that. Sure. Yeah, and the low rider. I know there's a lot of cool cars uh, in there. Were those generated? Are there any real cars in that video that look really cool? All, all those, all those cars begin as real photos. Okay. 
footage and and then then graphically those are morphed and they you know animated so to speak yeah right it really fits the uh the song i mean that's a really cool song that's a it's a grooving song and you add your special touch in there it's got a cool bass uh line in there that i love very very close to the original uh the effort on this song was to honor the original version in terms of tempo key right. feel, even some of the uh, sound effects for the vocals uh, whether it's reverb or delay to get really close to the feel and the texture of the original song yeah uh, the bass part's pretty close some slight subtle variations on it but it's like stick or, stay at home sit on the porch watch the kids run around the yard <laughs> and i like that I, uh, i'm that i i, I got to get moving on to to another interview here coming up and i really appreciate you taking time with me and we should do this again gary we well, sure hey i'll be here anytime you need me if you ever get bored just let me know but right. uh well you know what me, yeah um just let me say again though man the best band ever journey and you were one of the reasons and i just you added and still do add so much to music and i just want to say thank you for being the best bass player in my life i mean i've been a fan for all my life and i really want to say thank you for that well you are entirely welcome and it's so thoughtful of you Thank you so much, Gary. All righty. Well, you have a great day, and I'll be talking to you soon, okay? I think we both will. Okay. All righty. Take care See now. Bye. Bye-bye. And there you have it, folks. Ross Valerie, the best there is on that bass. Check out his brand new album, All of the Above, where you get your music. Check out his website for more information. And, uh, yeah, so good to talk to him. I want to do it again. Uh, very soon and uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing more music from him in the future uh, but check out that album online too you can check it on YouTube and the video is really cool and uh, let me know what you think about it and until next time everybody always remember to keep the music real